This year, October 1st, 2022, will mark the 73rd anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. It's funny that all the communist countries always have the People's Republic on their official titles. In reality, it is the government who has all the power, not the people. But this is how they twist people's minds. While on this day, China is celebrating, I see this day more as the 73rd anniversary of hell on earth. October 1st, 1949, when PRC was established in mainland China, it was a birth of a heinous nation that would lead to 73 years and ongoing of fear, suffering, and deaths. The Chinese regime has caused more harm than good. Actually, just harm, no good at all. First, inside China, and now, globally. Starting with the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution, which left millions dead. My grandparents and their six children suffered during Mao's regime. My father, being the oldest of four boys at the age of 18, illegally swam to Hong Kong from mainland China for a better life and to make money to send back to mainland China for my grandparents to raise their five children. The Chinese regime first caused trouble outside of China in 1950 when the People's Volunteer Army was sent to aid North Korea in the war. If China did not intervene, I believe Korea would not be divided today. North Korea was very close to losing the war after South Korean and American forces drove them all the way up to the Chinese border. After China joined the war, there were a lot more casualties. One of them was Mao Zedong's oldest son, Mao Anying. The invasion of Tibet, the traditional homeland of the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan people, which led to the current Chinese occupation and human rights are abused daily over there. That is the same for all the Uyghurs who are locked up in concentration camps in Xinjiang. This is what happens when you do journalism in Xinjiang. We've already been followed by three or four guys, including one of them, who I've seen follow us from the second we got out of the baggage area. We should check your okay. passport visa. It's almost it's 1 a.m. It's nearly impossible to freely report on the hundreds of thousands of people that are likely languishing in camps right now. And that means that the rest of the world can't really see what's going on there. This is one of the biggest human rights stories on Earth. And as we saw firsthand, China is actively trying to cover it up. And in 1989, there were only 364 days in mainland China. June 4th, 1989 was erased by the Chinese regime. The Tiananmen Square Massacre. Moving forward to my hometown, Hong Kong. After the handover in 1997, the Chinese regime had promised Hong Kong that under the one country, two system principle, Hong Kong would be able to enjoy a high degree of autonomy and the previous way of life will remain unchanged for 50 years. However, a lot has changed since 1997, especially after the national security law was enacted. The national security law is an example of a broken promise made by the Chinese regime during the Sino-British Joint Declaration of 1984. Hong Kongers are living in fear Many have fled Hong Kong with no plans on returning. Hong Kongers are still trying to find ways to leave Hong Kong. Hong Kong is no longer that safe haven where my father escaped to in 1968. Another concern is Taiwan. Winnie the Pooh has made it clear that Taiwan must reunify with China. 
by force if necessarily. He even reached out to Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen, offering one country, two system in Taiwan. Fortunately, President Tsai Ing-wen responded by saying, as long as she is president, she will never accept one country, two system in Taiwan. There are fears that China might invade Taiwan. Because of pressures from the Chinese regime, Taiwan is not even part of the United Nations, and they cannot even participate as a country in the Olympics, only as Chinese Taipei. And now, the most recent one, the COVID-19 pandemic. Because the Chinese regime failed to contain the virus, it led to the Wuhan outbreak, and now worldwide. COVID-19 became a pandemic because the Chinese regime failed to contain it and refused to take responsibility for what happened. The Chinese doctor who discovered COVID tried to warn others, but the Chinese authorities made him shut up. They tried to hit the responsibility by silencing all the journalists who tried to report the outbreak in Wuhan. So during the past two years, to everyone who lost their lives from COVID-19, it is safe to say the Chinese regime is responsible, but they don't want to take responsibility. They tried to blame it on others. They told their citizens that it was the U.S. Army who went to Wuhan and planted COVID-19 there. I hope one day the Chinese regime will be able to face the consequences for failing to contain COVID and allowing it to spread worldwide. Because of China's growing economy, almost every country has to rely on China. That's why everybody wants to do some sort of business with China. And that's when they bow down to China. The American film industry, for example, they have to make sure that their films could be shown in the country. If not, then they don't get much profit from the international box office. I mean, why else do you think John Sheena had to apologize for calling Taiwan a country? Because China was really ticked off that he referred Taiwan as the first country to watch F9. And John Sheena was worried that F9 might be blacklisted in China. It's all about the money. Another example, Disney. Disney distributed a film about the Dalai Lama's life in Tibet before his exile. It's called Kundun. After that film was released, China retaliated by banning all Disney films and cartoons in the country. Disney begged China to forgive them. Disney said Kundun was a stupid mistake and they would do anything to undo the damage. To this day, Kundun is not even released on any digital platforms. They are even reluctant to talk about Kundun all to maintain a good relation with China and to continue to make their stinking money. Again about Hong Kong, after the handover, many Hong Kong celebrities and other public figures betrayed Hong Kong for China. Many Hong Kong celebrities decided to move to mainland China to start a new career there. For example, Jackie Chan. 
Jackie Chan is definitely a traitor to Hong Kong. Only a handful of Hong Kong celebrities stood up against China, and now they're blacklisted in mainland China, and none of the Hong Kong filmmakers wants to work with them. Chapman To, Tong Man Zat, Anthony Wong, Wang Chao Sun, they both moved to Taiwan. So this is how the Chinese regime is controlling other countries indirectly, by threatening them with money. As soon as they say, we're cutting ties with you, that's when everybody freaks out. <coughs> money does blind people, especially the US film industry. They are desperate to have their films shown in China. Even John Sheena couldn't wrestle his way out on that one. And I'm very disappointed to say that the university that I graduated from was bowing down to China. With the Confucius Institute, which I'm really glad that is no longer there. And last year, our lovely university president, President De La Torre, was there to greet the Council General of PRC in LA and allowed him to brainwash fellow Aztecs. Please celebrate with me as we honor Council John Chung as a thank you for being today's distinguished speaker. He will be presented with the STSU's Presidential Medallion. I'm honored to introduce Council John Chung and his topic for the next half hour. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Respected President Delatory, such as Taiwan, Hong Kong, Xinjiang, and Tibet, we hope that the US side will stop meddling in China's internal affairs. The question of Taiwan is the most important and sensitive core issue in China-US relations. The one China principle is the political foundation of the relationship, a red line that cannot be transpassed or crossed. We hope the US side will abide by one China principle and the three Sino joint Sino US joint communiques handle the Taiwan question prudently and properly. Issues in relation to Xinjiang, in essence, are about fighting against violence, terrorism, and separatism. The claim that there is genocide in Xinjiang couldn't be more prosperous. Preposterous. Pre it is just a lie fabricated with ulterior motives. Instead of bowing down to the Chinese regime, we must stand up against them. It might hurt at first, but in the long run, it will be worthwhile. The price of freedom will always be high, but all of us should be willing to pay for it. If you want to know how the U.S. film industry is being controlled indirectly by the Chinese regime, watch the South Park episode banned in China. Oh, South Park is banned in China after that episode banned in China. The Chinese regime is like a little baby. They cannot handle any criticism. I mean, after John Cena said, Taiwan is the first country to watch F9, they start whining and complaining about John Sheena calling Taiwan a country. They're crybabies. Winnie the Pooh is a crybaby. I'm pretty sure if Xi Jinping sees this video, he'll be like, somebody's calling me Winnie the Pooh on YouTube. So many people are misguided believing that October 1st is a celebration for China. It's not. It's not about the country China at all. It's about the Chinese regime. A lot of Chinese friends would post online saying that happy anniversary to my country, to the motherland. Well, here's the thing. China existed way before October 1st, 1949. October 1st is a celebration of the Chinese regime taking control of mainland China. But the thing is, there's nothing good to celebrate this day. As I said in the beginning, Ever since the Chinese regime took control of mainland China on October 1st, 1949, it has been 73 years and ongoing of hell on earth. People will always continue to live in fear as long as they exist. In fact, there's a possibility that the Chinese regime might take over the US and other countries. They want to rule the world. 
actually it is already happening for example some of my youtube videos where i talked about ccp i cannot even monetize them some of them it has been restricted to 18 and over the u.s definitely does not want to upset the chinese regime what i really hate is all this talk about maintaining peace with china and all that by doing that we are bowing down to them it proves that we are scared of them instead of doing that we need to stand up against them not just the usa every other country the end of the chinese regime would be like hitting two birds with one stone the end of the chinese regime would also mark the end of dprk North Korea's only ally is China. Without China, they cannot exist. Especially with how the way they are running things in the country. With the Chinese regime, peace was never an option. With what the Chinese regime is doing now, it proves that they are unstoppable. And with every country relying on them because they have the fastest growing economy, it's just making them stronger. The Chinese regime is growing stronger because we are allowing it to happen. I pray earnestly that one day I will live to see the collapse of the Chinese regime. So, October 1st, 2022, 73 years of hell on earth. The People's Republic of China. Freedom to Hong Kong, Tibet, Xinjiang, Taiwan and all the Chinese citizens who are brainwashed in mainland China. I hope one day all of you will be able to wake up. I will pray for all of you. Well, thanks for watching. I'm probably gonna get attacked by a bunch of Wu Maos. Come at me. Gotta make those 50 cents, right?